Grace Talks, it's Tuesday. Well, it'll be Tuesday when you're hearing this. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Thank you guys for listening to our podcast. A lot going on. Hope you guys are well, blessed, and certainly warm. <clears throat> As I'm recording this in Oklahoma, right before spring break, it's like snowing, so... That's why I say that. It's wrong. But it is what it is. Hey, I want to get into the show because this is really, really a cool uh, episode today. I have a special, special guest. Um, I've known Rachel for a couple of years now, and she's written a magnificent book. It's called The Call, uh, Call to Sing, and I'm very excited to have Rachel on the podcast today. Hey, Rachel, how are you? Hey, good. Hey. You hear that? The people are clapping for you because uh, they're happy to <laughs> they're happy to have you on the podcast today. I want to say I am so blessed to have you, and uh, I've been knowing you for oh man, I think we met in 2012 or so, somewhere in there. And uh, one thing that's cool about Rachel and her husband Caleb they are they are genuine. I've, uh, our kids stayed at their house. Our youth kids stayed at their house once uh, for a youth camp. And I know they are genuine lovers of Jesus Christ. And uh, we spent a weekend together when they came uh, to my town to lead worship. And it was an incredible time. So I'm glad to have you, Rachel. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I I was trying to figure out how long it's been. And that's what I came up with, too, is probably the spring of 2012 when I first met you. So it's it's been a while now. And here we are. This is so fun. <laughs> We've grown up a little bit. We've had some children since then. Uh, matter of fact, one of my kids is uh, snuck in here now, and I don't know how to uh, tell him to get out without uh, ruining the podcast. So uh, I'll let if you hear something, that's him in the background. I, I want to say before we get into this, uh, one of the testimonies in your book was really quite powerful because it really reflected exactly how I have felt listening to Rachel and Caleb and uh, I hop over the years. And this testimony comes from someone named Julie. And again, it's in, in your book. It says, in 2011, I began to experience postpartum depression. I've never experienced depression in any form before and never understood those who had. Every night at the exact same time it would hit me, one day I discovered a live broadcast with a worship set set from a ministry online. And I honestly discovered a gold mine. I'm sorry, that's my kid. Because it was the tool that will set me free and bring back joy to my life. And I'll, I'll, I'll let uh, you talk about that because I, I think that's so powerful because there were so many times in my life that I turned on IHOP or I turned on you or Caleb or, or somebody and you guys were singing my life. I mean, you were singing to me and it was bringing so much hope and so much joy to me. And that really, that really, uh, really ministered to me reading her testimony because it is such an honor to be able to just say, Hey, thank you. Because you have no idea how many seasons of my life that you guys sung me through. So thank you. Wow. That's yeah. Julie's testimony and, and, and yours, it's been really cool. Part of um, what I did with the book is the beginning of every chapter. I did start with a testimony from different people all across the nation. I just kind of reached out to some people and asked like, how has prophetic singing, prophetic worship impacted your life? Has God spoken to you through it? What has God said? What has he done in your life through prophetic singing? And so I just testimonies flooded in and it was it was hard to choose, you know, the the ones that I put in. There there was quite a few, but the just the theme throughout is the way that God's voice came through the singing, whether it was singing, like you said, the season of life that you're in almost like, you know, the person just read your mail and knew yeah. and knew what was going on, or even just, yeah. you know, in the, in the context of worship, um, the, the worship leader or the singer singing, you know, their own heart to the Lord. And it was exactly what you needed to sing for yourself, like singing your way into the truth. And so, yeah, Julie's testimony was, is so powerful. Just the way that the voice of the Lord came and spoke to her in her own room through even through the live stream, you know, through the Internet. Just so cool how the Lord does that. Yeah, I think that's impressive because not just impressive, but it shows just the the Holy Spirit, because you don't even have to be in the room. 
I didn't have to be in the room with you to to feel the presence of God or be encountered by the word. It's like when the Seraphonesian woman, when she cried out that the Lord would heal her daughter, the daughter wasn't even there. <laughs> the Bible says that when she got home, she was sitting up in her bed and the demon was gone. It's just a powerful thing to be able to encounter the Lord through the aspect, especially in the context that you're talking about in the, the place of prayer and the place of worship. I want to ask you about that because in your book, you talk about Psalms 27 and, and, oh man, I just, I love trying to figure out the heart of people that write songs that, that move my heart and how do they do it? How are they encountering Jesus Christ? And you go on to talk about that verse and the one thing, and I mean, you break it down in such a beautiful way. Uh, so uh, can you talk about that a little bit? And then we'll talk about the book and, and why you wrote the book. Yeah. <clears throat> Psalm 27 verse four is kind of one of those life verses for me. It says, one thing have I desired of the Lord that I would seek after to dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life to behold his beauty, to encounter him and to, to ask him questions, to inquire in his temple. And so I do, I include, I include that, that verse in the book and I, I kind of do, I break it down line by line and what this means, what this verse means to me and what it means to the body of Christ. And then what it means to us as worship leaders and singers, musicians, um, and our, our focus and our aim, our goal of our life is, is to be lovers of his presence, to love his presence, to, to consistently put ourselves before the Lord in his presence, whether it's, you know, in, in the church or it's in like the little prayer room, you know, that we, that we have or in our prayer closet at home, but consistently like going before the Lord, like this is the place that I want to dwell. Like for real, I want to be here as much as possible. I want to spend my time. I want to even, you know, I dare to say waste my life at the feet of Jesus. And so Psalm 27, four is just this beautiful articulation of the desire and the longing in the human heart to just simply be with Jesus, to be at his feet like Mary of Bethany. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's it for me. That's, I, you know, I've been doing this now for, you know, a couple decades now leading worship and, and doing this prophetic worship thing. And I, you know, I haven't graduated from it. I just, I want to be <laughs> in this presence. I want to, this is it. Yeah. Like no plan B. That's right. And because it's presence, actually, it's not just a metaphor. I mean, it really is something that you can uh, communicate. He is there. I mean, that's the idea of like in its presence. And I love what you say when you talk, the, the idea of inquiring is, is dialogue. It's conversation. You actually are communicating with someone who wants to communicate in dialogue back with you. Yeah. Yeah, I I like to it it really is relational. Like God is God is God and he's big and he's other than and he's holy and worthy and uh we're we're to be in awe and we're to you know have that like holy fear and trembling. And then yet at the same time there's this tension in our relationship with God because at the same time even though he's all of those things, he desires relationship with us. He desires uh us to actually communicate. And mm -hmm. so the inquiring in his temple for me is, am I talking to God? Did I, did I really go a whole day and, and not communicate? Did I not speak to him? Did I not ask him a question, you know, or, or maybe it was just me <laughs> saying help <Yeah>. constantly, <laughs> constantly through the day. Like that counts too. It's, but, but I want it to be, I want it to be two way communication. And so as I'm, as I'm saying, God help with this or, you know, kind of bringing him into my day, I'm also creating space in my day to listen mm -hmm. and to hear his voice. Cause I, I believe that he is still speaking and he wants to speak and he is speaking and I want to have ears to hear. And so that idea of inquiring in his temple in Psalm 27, like that kind of takes on a whole new meaning when you think about God being a relational God and actually wanting to have this communication with us. Yeah. I love that. Um, so the book, the book called to sing right here, get your copy today. I, I have read this and it is incredibly in, in, uh, inspiring and encouraging. And I want to talk about that a little bit. First, I want to talk about 
the portion that you just directly talk to singers. What is the question that you always ask singers? Because you and your husband, you you guys are worship pastors at your church. You have done this, not just been a worship leader for decades. You are teaching worship leaders. You're coaching other people. You go into churches and 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 you're ministering and pouring into singers. What is the question uh, that your book says that you always ask uh, singers? Yes. I, I love to ask this question. I just ask, who who here can sing? Just the simple question. I ask it to singers. I ask it to our musicians. Really, just it's kind of a fun question to ask anybody. Like, who who here in this room can sing? Who, you know, who here listening to my voice today, who, who can sing? And it is so interesting to kind of get that immediate feedback. It's a couple things happen is one, you have the non-singers, they, you know, they're like low away and you can just kind of feel the tension and the stress rise. Even the singers who, who know that they can sing, they're like, do I admit that I can? Like, <laughs> is it prideful yeah, for me to say I can sing? Yeah. 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 yeah like, you know, it's just, it is just this trap of a question that I love to ask, especially at the beginning of my classes that I teach. And, uh, and of course it's a trick question. The truth is we all can sing. Yeah. Everybody can sing. And what, what we what we have done, though, is we have attached a kind of clause to that question. And I didn't I didn't say the clause, but everyone hears. Are you a good yeah. singer? Yeah, that's not actually what, what I was asking. I was just asking, like, who can sing? Yeah. And the, and the truth is everybody. But we we in our culture have kind of created this like. If you sing, you have to be good. Like mm-hmm. there is almost like this like necessary skill required to even like sing out loud in front of people or to call mm-hmm. yourself a singer. And, and the truth is though, is that, you know, we, we're all called to sing and yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself, but the Lord has called us to sing and it, there, it's a biblical command. And when God commands anything, uh, it's time for us to listen and to hear that command and to obey it. But for the command to sing, he actually commands it over 400 times yeah. in the Bible. That's a lot of times. That's a lot like, of times. Really, really want us and desire for us to obey that command for him to just continue to ask us to do this. And so, yeah, we are all called to sing. All of us are able to sing. We have we have a voice whether you know we're making joyful noises or we're making beautiful sound like we all uh we all have we all can sing i love the idea too that not only to me that question is like in you know it's two ways to look at it too uh are you a singer meaning okay you have a voice god gave you a voice but then the question is are you singing you know that's another thing like if god is commanding us to sing are we obeying it and, and why not because your book deals with kind of why we're not singing and I love what you go into. You says your voice matters. I mean, first of all, God gave you that mm-hmm. voice. Uh, you know, God God loves to hear your voice. I mean, I don't want to steal your part, but it's so encouraging because I look over the service and I'm hearing, you know, I'm watching people as they worship. And, and it's like, why are people not engaging? Why are people not singing? Mm-hmm. Maybe because they think their voice is horrible. Uh, maybe because they're distracted, whatever the case is. But uh to know that our voice matters, no matter what it sounds like, no matter how good it is, it matters. And so the question becomes to you, Rachel, why does our voice matter? Yeah, our (laughs) voice, it does, it matters. I think (laughs) there's um, something beautiful that the Lord, you know, has created in our voices. Like we all sound different. We have just the, 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 the biology of, of our voices, it's all, it, it's all different in the way that we're producing sound and the tone and all of the things. Um, but the, the truth is, is that the Lord desires to hear your voice. And so I, I don't want to withhold that, which God is asking of me. That's good. And that's good. He, he is longing, yeah. not because he needs, like, not because he, you know, without it, like, wouldn't be God or whatever, but he, he actually longs to, to hear our voices. Song of Solomon too says, um, mm. let me, let me see your face. Mm. Um, and let me hear your voice because yeah. your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. And and the Lord is, is desiring our worship. He's desiring the sound of our voice to be lifted up. And, you know, singing is the, to sing is one of the 
Hebrew words for praise. It's the it's tehila. It actually means to sing and that command to sing. And so I first God God's asking me to do it, and my and he's he's not just saying hey let's have the good people sing and worship everybody else listen and enjoy it. No, he is saying you you in the back you know who who stand in worship with your arms crossed and you love Jesus, like, it's okay, lift up your voice. And I know it, you know, the weakness of it and kind of the like uncomfortability, but there's power when you sing. And then, and then too, the Lord, I think he, he, he loves us singing and, and it matters and it's valuable because sometimes we actually like the, the power in us singing and declaring truth ourselves kind of helps us to realign with truth as we sing and declare That's right. and you know lift up the sound of our own voice it's 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 worship to the lord because he's worthy but also the lord knows like actually you, you need to sing this for yourself you need yeah. to declare this yeah. truth on your own with your own voice. Yeah, because you're coming in alignment with his truth, right? You're you're agreeing with his truth and you're disagreeing with the lies that the enemy has uh, tried to rest upon you. So it it is important to sing. And and and, and you go on to say, well, th- this that's another book. I mean, I, I look forward to that book as well. You writing that book about uh, to people just to declare and to sing. But this book is certainly more specific to the singers so that we could, uh, so that singers and musicians could uh, work on their craft and so that they can come into the truth. So I want to ask you that. Why did you write this book? Yeah. So I've, I've been leading worship for, you know, 20 years or so. And I've been teaching and instructing and coaching worship team singers. I've done a lot of vocal lessons that I've, I've taught. And just throughout the years, I've noticed that there's not a whole lot of resources specifically um, for singers in a worship context. Of course, we have like real heady, you know, how to sing and like singing for dummies and kind of, you know, those kind of resources. And then we also just have like worship resources. And <laughs> I love that I got to see you laugh at that. It's funny. Um, But we, you know, we kind of have those resources. We have the worship resources. But what I haven't seen is this resource for people that are singing um, in worship kind of specifically for them. And so, and I I teach a class um, in Kalamazoo at our Radiant School of Worship, and it's on prophetic worship and prophetic singing. And so every year I kind of like gather my notes and kind of, adjust and add to it as as like I grow and as I'm learning different things and and actually Caleb Culver my husband he he mentioned a couple years ago he's like wouldn't it be great if you had like a book or like a resource almost like you know recommended reading for your class kind of a thing because you've been teaching on this subject for years I was like yeah that would be so great who could we get to do that (laughs) and you know he was of course just gently suggesting that hey Rachel like maybe you need maybe you need to write this maybe book. it's you <laughs> yeah yeah and so you know I never I honestly never set out to to write a book but I I just kind of realized oh I guess I, I do I do know a little bit about this now and you know just the kindness of the Lord to to walk with me through these past years and doing this and you know practicing um singing and pr- practicing just, you know, prophetic worship. And so, yeah, that's kind of how it started is just a simple resource for my class. And then as I continued to write, I realized like, no, this is, this is for the body of Christ. This is for our churches. This is for our worship teams. And this is for, you know, um, even just people who are wanting to grow in singing and in worship to the Lord. I remember Misty Edwards saying something that is really kind of marked me f- for a long time, she said, you lead by your gaze and the importance of having a intimate relationship with Jesus, not just for worship leaders, but for preachers as well. Like if I'm preaching about, you know, something, I should be, you know, moved by it. I should be so moved by it that I, that I tremble and it should move me because if it doesn't move me, then it won't move the people that are listening to me. It, it might because the Holy Spirit obviously is, uh, is moving as well. But I want to talk about that part of worship because you go in and talk about the calling and then you say something that I think is really, really powerful as well. You talk about holiness and how it matters. 
Okay, you talked about how the voice matters and how holiness also matters and how it's important for the person that is called to sing or called to worship um, to be worshipers uh, themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. You know, I, I've seen, I've seen sometimes, you know, worship teams and maybe in some different conferences and in, in places that I've been, I've kind of seen like the singers and the worship team kind of like get out on stage and like lead, you know, the body of Christ in worship and then, you know, skip out on, mm -hmm. on the sermon and they're out back like smoking or yeah. do it like just yeah. cutting up, who knows, you know, and, and just whatever. <laughs> and I, my heart and desire is to see like our, our musicians, our singers, our, our creatives engaged with the Lord mm -hmm. and connected to his heart and, and living and living lives of holiness, like holiness, like you said that I said it does. It does matter how we live our lives, how we are inviting the Lord in to speak to us. Like our relationship with Jesus is going to come out on the stage, whether we're a musician playing our guitar. We just think we're there playing our guitar, but we're not. We're leading worship and what come, what, what's been deposited in us in secret, what we're doing in secret in our private lives, that actually comes out through our playing. Like, and it's so and good. So and that's our, in both ways too, Rachel. I, I remember uh, I, I grew up in, in going to the very uh, exuberant African-American churches. And I remember being in a youth service once and the guy started to preach and he was preaching and all the kids were with him and people were shouting and jumping and everything. And then you know, he was into it. Oh, we're going to fight the devil. And yeah, we're going to take the devil out. And they're, okay, yes. And I'm going to kick the devils. And he cussed. You kick the devil, <laughs> you know. And everybody was like, ooh, kind of sat back down and kind of, because what's in you is going to come out. I mean, wh whether whether you're talking about good or, or bad. And so it's important that it, you know, that you spend the time with the Lord and get get the good things in you so we can produce fruit on stage as well. Yes. Amen. Yeah. That was it. You, that was, you just <laughs> preached. You know, <laughs> I, I like to throw in any kind of soul hymn that I can. Mm, okay. Anyway, um, you talk about your value and then you start talking about uh, the, the worship leader and they're called to be, uh, to be like a, to be a, uh, a priest uh, to be a Levite. And you say it in your book about your value, you go uh, on to say that you're not just a singer, you're a valuable member of the team. You're a Levite, your voice matters, and your voice counts as well. And I think that goes back to, to what you're saying, because sometimes when we don't think our voice counts, or we're just up there, or we're just playing a little lick on the deal, we do disconnect. We don't get in. We don't submit to uh, what's going on in the service. We don't realize, hey, I'm participating. I'm a part of this. This is important, what I'm doing. What I'm declaring is important, uh, not only to God, but it could be something, a tool that's setting people free as well. Yeah. Amen. I mean, I, to, to, the, to the BGVs, mm -hmm. your voice matters. You know, to the to the electric two who you're just kind of playing the rhythm, you know, they won't let you play the, the lead lines yet. Like your yeah. sound matters. matters. Yeah. Yes. You know, I, I think we are called to, to be, it's, it's that, it's that idea of being a Levite. It's this role. It, it not only matters, but like it counts like those little melodies that you sing the way that you contribute in worship, it matters and it counts. And, you know, I think we have kind of in some ways forgotten about the singers and, and, and the, you know, it's kind of like you just show up and here's the lyrics and hopefully, you know, figure it out. We don't spend a lot of time even in rehearsals kind of coaching and helping our singers to to build their confidence and boldness as singers. We're just like, here's, you know, just sometimes we don't even make them come to rehearsals. And, yeah. you know, that's kind of like, oof, that speaks about their value as well. Mm. You know, you don't even need to rehearse, just kind of show up and, and whatever. But I, I want us to place value on our, on our singers because our singers are leading the room and 
if we have singers that are shy, intimidated, or bold, like uh, not bold and not confident, like that that comes through. And so it is it's important to to place value on our singers and you as a singer, um, as a vocalist at your church, like it counts and it matters. And you know, it's it's time, it's time to sing, it's time to rise up, be confident in who you are, who God has created you to be, and to to sing out and to not withhold your sound. That's so good. I, I do want to ask you, I want to ask you about why is it time to sing? I think that's very important too. Like the whole idea that you're saying, it's time to sing. It's time for you to rise up. Are you a singer? I think that's important. But I, I, I want to go back on the, just the fact that if you listen to this and you're saying, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a line singer or, or maybe I'm just up there holding the mic. My mic's not even on or it's not even loud. <laughs> and what am I doing here? They won't let me lead a song. I, I remember several years ago, and I'm going to try to tie this in, but uh, several years ago I was on vacation and I was kind of in a bad place and one, it was on a Wednesday night and I wanted to go to a service. So I, I went to one church and then I, I didn't feel the Lord, whatever that means. And so I left and then I went to another church and I didn't feel the Lord. And so I left and then I went to another church and then I, I didn't feel the Lord and I left. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, like I'm really trying to find uh, where the heart of the Lord is. And so um, I went to a black church. I went to a white church. I mean, I was trying to find him out. And then on my way home or back to my hotel, there was a it was a uh, Lutheran church or something like that. I couldn't remember. But I walked in the door. And as soon as I sat down, the preacher said, amen. And everybody left. And I was feeling like a total failure. I mean, I really was. I was like, come on, I've just wasted all this time. I was walking to my car. And this one lady looked at me and she says, have a blessed night. God bless you. And I felt the Lord on it. I mean, I really did. I just, it, it moved me so much. It just hit my heart. And she didn't even say anything deep. She didn't lay hands on me. She didn't speak in tongues. It wasn't nothing powerful that happened. It's something powerful happened in me. But all she said was, God bless you. And I just think about that when you talk about singers. You might think your part's small. You might think it's insignificant. But you have no idea how your faithfulness and how your obedience might move the heart of the Lord and move the heart of somebody in the audience as well. And uh, I, I just want, can you encourage that that singer before we go on a break and talk about uh, why it's time to sing, but can you encourage that singer that feels like, uh, here we go again, I'm just here, I'm just filling up space, I'm not important. Can you encourage that, uh, that singer that might even feel like uh, they feel like quitting? It's not worth it. Yeah, well, I... I... I love to just, you know, encourage our, our singers at our local church in Kalamazoo. And it's so interesting if you, sometimes we lose sight when we're, you know, kind of doing this day in, day out, we get the the monotony kind of sets in yeah. and this is just what we do. And I don't even know, like, you're, yeah, d- does this matter? Is what I'm, am I wasting my time? Should I just kind of, you know, do something else Sunday mornings or should I just whatever? And it's so interesting if you think about it, when you're, when you're in the room um, in, in a worship set, a lot of times, like when I, I'm not leading and I'm just in the room, my eyes kind of go to our singers. I'm not really looking at the drummer. You know, I'm kind of, you know, if I'm not focusing on the Lord and I'm just kind of distracted, I end up kind of watching the singers. It's like, oh, I don't know. It's just kind of where I, I, I gravitate towards them. But what, what do I see? I see? I see them with maybe their hands raised, but always, always they're singing. And I, and I hear kind of the, the, the choir sound or the, the group, kind of the, the gang vocals, if you will, the BGVs, the, the sound of singing. And what does it do? It encourages my heart to sing. Exactly. And I, I'm like, oh, yeah, like that's what I'm here to do. And, yeah. and so as much as it feels insignificant what you're doing, you are leading so the corporate body so of good. Jesus Christ into worship like that is what you are doing you're not just singing a song you're not just singing a harmony part that you don't like singing or you don't even know when you're taking it you know you are leading the body of christ in worship you are joining in with the sound of heaven you know here here on earth as it is in heaven like you are a part of making that happen and so your voice and your worship and your even your stage presence because i mean let's be honest sometimes our, our mics might not be on as loud as we think they should be but even our stage presence and our our physical act of worship like 
we're, we're leading a small room. We're leading a big room. We're leading hearts. We're leading one person mm. to the presence of Jesus who, who they, they need to encounter the Lord, mm. you know, that morning. And it's your role. It's your job as any, any, anywhere on the stage. It's your role to, to create that environment for them to have encounter with the living God. And that's because you matter. That's so good. Hey, I'm gonna. We're gonna take a quick break here, and we'll come back with uh, Rachel. We're gonna ask her about practical things like how to become a better singer, uh, writing songs. What's the best way to write songs? How to write songs? How does she write songs? And uh, maybe we'll even ask her what songs move her heart right now, and uh, maybe we'll find out some more things about her. Uh, this is Grace Talks. We will be right back. Grace Talks. So good to have you back. Call to Sing. Rachel Culver. So good to have her. And all right, before we go into some of this, what are some of your favorite worship songs? Like, what moves your heart? What song right now? If I started. Singing it or playing it right now would bring a tear to your eye. What what songs really move, move your heart? Maybe not bring a tear to your eye, but you're like, yeah, I love that one. Okay, well, I mean, you literally just said it in your question. The song Move Your Heart by uh, Upper Room. Uh. It messes me up. Just some of those <laughs> the lyrics. Is it a fragrance? I, mm. I'll pour it out. Is it? Is it a life laid down? Like, what is it, God, that moves your heart? Because that's what I want to give you. And so every time I get the chance to lead that song or I even just hear it, it just, it kind of always stops me in my tracks. And I just am like, yes, that's, that's <laughs> it. Like, it's just kind of easy to engage in worship with that song. We've had Joel on our podcast. I've, I've known Joel since he was a, a really young whippersnapper and, uh, Really like that kid and appreciate what they're doing at Upper Room, at the Upper Room. So what other songs, what other older songs, hymns, any any, any hymns that make you say, man, that's that's going to be one of them to sing forever? Yeah, I, I love hymns. Um, I love it as well. Mm. I love Great Is Thy Faithfulness. Yeah. I'm like really kind of just stuck in the Lord's faithfulness right now. So really any song that got faithful in it. lets me sing about his faithfulness, that's me. I'm just like, you know, I don't, I don't know what it is. I'm like getting old or something. And I'm just like, oh, you're so faithful. <laughs> but man, all of those songs that talk about the faithfulness of Jesus, those are, those are some of my favorites. I love, I love nineties worship music. Yeah. Like that was kind of my adolescence. Mm. Um, and so just some of those like shout to the Lord that yeah. came out maybe in the late nineties, but, um, and just some of the old, like integrity, Hosanna mm. vineyard mm. worship. I was just going to yeah. say the vineyard songs. Yeah. 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 Man, there, there's so much, there's so much. So the, the idea of worshiping and singing worship songs and songs that move us, let's, let's, let's talk about the, um, why there's a necessity in this hour to to sing. Uh, we, we know the scriptures. Uh, sing to the Lord a new song. That's Isaiah uh, that tells us to sing to the Lord a new song. And uh, so why? Why is it important in this hour that you're talking about? It's time. Why is it important to to sing? Yeah, I, I love the story of um, the Israelites when they were set free from 400 years of, of slavery, the Lord kind of broke in to time. And, you know, they, they had been, I just, I like to think about the Israelites kind of like, what, what do those worship services look like for those 400 years when they were in slavery? And then, you know, suddenly God breaks in and he sets them free and he, you know, splits the Red Sea and they're on the other side of the Red Sea. And they just kind of like, oh, God did it like he he saved us and we've been set free and what do they want to do they want to worship and and it's so cool because they they have all those songs you know from the 90s worship music <laughs> and they have they have the old hymns that they've been singing 
But what they do in that moment is Moses stands up and he sings a new song. And I just, I love, I say this all the time, but when God does a new thing, the people of God sing a new song. A new song and yeah. God is doing a new thing in this hour, in this, you know, in our current time in history. Like, it's kind of a wild ride right now, all that's going on ride, in, yeah. in the world these last, these last few years. And I, it is very clear that, you know, God is doing a new thing. Every everything is is kind of changing around us, and, and 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 but God is on the move, and He He is doing a new thing in our time, and so it is time for us, um, as the worshipers, to rise up and to sing and to declare God's heart for us to even declare um, our heart, the heart of the body of Christ to the Lord, um, and so more than ever. You know, it is it is time to sing. It's time to sing a new song. It's time to, you know, sing from even our experience. I love that the song of Moses, after the splitting of the Red Sea, it was full of what God has recently done. It was, God, you've done this. You've done this. And, you know, the horse and the rider thrown into the sea. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Like, that was kind of new language in this new prophetic song that he was singing and that the Israelites were joining in with. And so as God is even doing a new thing in our day and in our time, like our singing and our songs can reflect, can mm. reflect that. And so, yeah, it is time to sing. I love what you, what you said in your book here. You said Moses about this song of Moses. <clears throat> you said Moses led the sons of Israel to sing with him. Every man joined in the song. Every man opened his mouth and with his own voice sang a new song, or sang the new song. It doesn't say the gift it sang a new song. It, uh, it doesn't say those who are close to Moses sang. It says all men. This is wide-scale participation. This is 100% agreement and engagement with this new song. I love the idea that they were all agreeing. They were all proclaiming. They were all joining in because God was doing a new thing, and they all responded uh, by singing a new song together. Yeah. Why why yeah. is that important? Why is it important to to sing together? Yeah. So I, I love so I, I love talking about this actually because you know it, it is powerful when one person gets up and sings and it's like, yes, amen. We can kind of agree. But what helps us to engage with that chorus or with that worship is when we sing it together. And so we get kind of this idea of like corporate unity, what Moses had with the, the people of Israel in that moment is he had all of the men joining in the song and singing it together. So it wasn't just like, you know, I, I'm less likely to be distracted and to kind of like start thinking about other things if when I'm singing myself. And so, you know, Moses did, he had all the men kind of like join in. And then, and then it says right after that, the song of Miriam, this is the first um, prophetic chorus, if you will, in the Bible. So Moses sings, you know, line after line, I think it's 16, 17 verses or so of the song of Moses. And the whole time I just see Miriam just because for whatever reason during that time in history, like they kind of did the men sing uh, first and then the women sing something else, kind of like some of those 90s songs with the like yeah. call and response, <laughs> the men sing first. So, you know, we still do that these days. And so, uh, but Miriam is kind of eyeing her instrument. She would play the tambourine. And so she's just waiting because she knows something and she's about to teach us this principle about corporate unity. And so she grabs her tambourine and she's been listening to the song of Moses and she catches the, the hook, the hook of Moses' song. He might not have even realized it. He's there's a hook there. There's this um, melody that is really kind of cool that sticks out. And, and thankfully that hook is also connected to um, the part of Moses's song that is really kind of encompassing the full idea of what God has done. And that is, that's the part that I just said, it's, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and the rider thrown into the sea. And I bet that Miriam didn't just sing that once. She, it says that Miriam and then all of the women kind of stood up and they sung that song. And I believe just, I don't know, this is just for fun. I, I bet that they sung that chorus well into the night and they were just, mm. I mean, the dancing and the celebrating and the worship and the high praise as they all joined in together. And so it was, you know, if Miriam sung it, 
by herself. She could have sung it once or twice. And I would have been like, oh, yeah, that was beautiful. That's totally what the <laughs> Lord did, you know? But they all kind of like jumped in together. And it was just this like exciting, like there was momentum in the corporateness and the unity that that chorus brought. Mm -hmm. So good. Uh, just listen to that. It's just making me move. I mean, it's just that's powerful. Uh, you, you said a couple times in your response, uh, you, you use the prophetic nature or this prophetic song. What is that? What does that mean to sing a prophetic song? What is a prophetic song? Yeah. So when we, you know, we kind of, we know what it means to sing or a song. We know what a song is. We're familiar with that term. And then, you know, we, we know what prophecy is, the, the spirit of prophecy or the gift of prophecy. Like we're familiar with that, but something happens. <laughs> And we put, take those two terms and we like put it into one term. Everyone's like, wait, I don't know what that is. I don't know how I feel about that. You know, I, I get prophecy and, you know, I, I get that. And, and I know what a song is, but mm, I don't know. I don't know. Put those two <laughs> things together. This something very bizarre happens. And so I love just trying to demystify the idea of a prophetic song or prophetic singing. So... <laughs> Prophetic, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to kind of give you my fun little just simple definition of prophetic worship is just simply when as we worship, we're inviting the Lord in to speak to us during worship. Because sometimes, you know, we worship and we're just, we just, we sing to him and here's what I'm going to sing and I'm going to sing it and that's worship and it's beautiful. And, and I think though that the Lord has some ideas and maybe even opinions about how he wants to be worshiped and even the, the like sing this you know hey rachel you know tell me i'm good mm -hmm. and it's not because he's like a you know pathetic god who just needs to be reminded how good he is he's actually like right, rachel you need to sing this for yourself that's right that's but, right that's or somebody needs to god. hear this somebody yeah. needs to hear this and and so prophetic worship or prophetic singing even a prophetic song is it's the testimony of jesus it's what god is saying and we release it in a song form yeah I love that. I mean, when when we're talking about prophecy, oftentimes we think of something, a prediction or forecasting or whatever the case is. But Revelation tells us that Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And so the 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 essence of prophecy is pointing to Jesus Christ and proclaiming it like a side of Jesus. He's faithful. He's this or that. And it can be spontaneous. Right. Or it doesn't have to be spontaneous. And I, I want you to talk about because you talk in your book about about that. I want you to tell us the difference between Spon spon uh, spontaneity, <laughs> but what being spontaneous and being prophetic, prophetic speed, uh, singing and uh, the spontaneous. Yeah. Okay, great. So spontaneous. That is, you know, simply just on, on the fly, off the cuff. Like I'm just going to sing something and it's spontaneous and it's super fun. And so sometimes we, we're like, oh yeah, it's spontaneous. I didn't plan it. So it must be prophetic, but here's, you know, um, prophetic is not synonymous with spon spontaneous mm -hmm. and prophetic prophetic worship could simply be me pulling like i said before it is well into my worship set because the the week before i lead worship i'm just i'm just kind of i've just been asking the lord god what do you want to do what are you what are you saying to the church this week what's on your heart how do you want to be worshiped what are how can i lead your people well into what you're already doing and saying to the church and then, you know, me just pulling on that old song, like, that's, that's prophetic worship. Cause it was the, it was the Lord saying, Hey, this is what, this is what I want you to sing. Um, that's, you know, that's prophetic worship. It doesn't have to be this, like, I spontaneously spur of the moment came up with all these things and like, no, like, and sometimes it is that, but sometimes it's just what, what the Lord is saying to the church and releasing that. And, and a lot of times it's, it's something that, you know, it's, uh, most of the time it's somewhere I've been before in worship. Mm -hmm. He's, he's yeah. the Holy Spirit it says he brings all things to remembrance. Yeah. And so he's like, hey, Rachel, remember that time you were worshiping me? And, you know, you did sing about the faithfulness of God. Bring some of that language in in this moment because God is, you know, he's I, I, God is saying, I, I want to remind the church that I'm mm -hmm. faithful. And so and, singing from that place. And so, but it, it prophetic worship, it's so relational. It comes out yeah. of relationship. It comes out of um, hearing God's voice and then, and then uh, creating space for him to move and him to speak. Yeah. And that's also in your book, you, uh, you have a, 
a very special friend of yours that writes chapter five, and and that chapter is basically about hearing the voice of God. I want to I want to quote, uh, and you can introduce your friend, but I'll 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 quote her for just a second. Uh, she says, um, "From the beginning, he speaking of God has been speaking, and he has never stopped speaking." And so that's important too. Like the idea to me too, as a preacher, <clears throat> as a singer, whatever the case is. I, I want to eavesdrop on a conversation. I want to be fully engaged with God and I want to hear and proclaim and declare what he, what he says. I, I think it's uh, Jesus speaking. Uh, I can't remember. I should know this, but Jesus talks about uh, the whispers and, and man, I should, I should know this, but that idea of shouting off on a rooftop, uh, what we hear in a whisper. And so like hearing that engaging conversation, that still small voice and being able to proclaim it as we sing or we, as we preach is so important. So uh, Anna, oh, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to let you do this. Uh, you have a very special friend that talks about hearing the voice of God in your book, right? Yes. So um, chap- it's chapter five and my dear friend, Anna Asbury, her and I have been singing and leading worship together and songwriting together for a lot of a lot a lot of years now and so she is incredible she's an incredible prophetic singer prophetic worship leader and so i uh i she graciously agreed to write this chapter on hearing the voice of god and she just breaks it down so so simply and um i just yeah i'm just super honored to have her be a part of the of the project and um, and she is, she's someone who hears the voice of the Lord. And, uh, you know, I think it's important for us when we think about hearing God's voices first, you know, it's just some of the groundwork is, is one God is still speaking, Yeah. you know, like that's, we want to, we want to kind of rally behind that. And cause that, that idea isn't a hundred percent agreed upon, you know, sadly. And so, but like God is, God is speaking. He's, he's a God who speaks. To God is still speaking and, and God is speaking to the church and, and God is speaking to you as an individual. And, and, and the truth is you can hear God's voice. I can hear God's voice and we don't do it perfectly 100% of the time. Yeah, we miss we're it sometimes. Yeah. We miss it. We do. We miss it sometimes, but, but we're growing in relationship and we're learning how to hear his voice and how to recognize it. You know, it says that he's the good shepherd. And, and we're his sheep and we hear his voice. And so that um, that muscle of learning to hear God's voice and listening and quieting our own hearts and, and growing in relationship and, and, and learning to hear him and being in the space that he's in and quieting our hearts. And so, yeah. And there are practical ways that you could hear, your, hear the voice of the Lord too. I do want to talk about that. Uh, when we start talking about writing songs and so forth. Uh, but before we do that, I, I want to ask you, you said in your book about your husband, Caleb, that he had uh, tried out for uh, the 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 worship team at IHOP to be a singer. Uh, he's an incredible uh, pianist and, and musician, incredible. Uh, but he tried out to be a singer and he did, got denied three times. And uh, on the fourth time, he was he made the team. He, he practiced and, and uh, tried to get his craft and his singing. How, how, what are some techniques? If there's people that are listening, I do want to be a singer, and maybe their voice is a little cracky, maybe, the, maybe something happens. Are there ways to become a better singer, and how do I become a better singer? Yeah. So Caleb absolutely loves that I told oh. that story. Oh, of course he does. Book. Yeah, he's super happy about that. Yeah, so, yeah. but it's true. He he for whatever reason and he he did. He spent he spent some time growing as a singer and so there are there are ways to grow. And it's so interesting because if I, you know, if you told me, "Hey, I want to learn how to play guitar." I wouldn't probably have to tell you how to learn to play guitar. Mm-hmm. You would know a couple things. You would know one. I need to learn it. I need to have someone teach me, right? Mm -hmm. I need to get some help. Um, Two, you would, maybe you're kind of like a self-starter and you're like, I know what to do. I'm going to watch some YouTube videos and learn how to play guitar. And, you know, there's just some of those practical things that you kind of know. But 
if you're like, I want to be a better singer, mm-hmm. we kind of just like, I think there's this thing that we just think that we got what we got and that's it. Like, I'm just the singer that I am today is the singer I will be forever. But the truth is, is that we don't have you know, that ceiling that you feel or like the get, you know, the raw talent that you have as a singer is kind of all that you have and you can't grow it, you know, because nobody knows how to play guitar. So we all know if we want to learn how to play guitar, we need to practice and we need to get a teacher and we need to learn and we need to invest time into the craft. But because we all can kind of sing a little bit, we think, oh, this is all that I have. And we don't steward this kind of raw talent of singing that we have. And so uh, to, to be really, really practical, if you want to become a better singer, you need to be singing. You need to be practicing just like you would an instrument. You know, uh, I, I used to take piano lessons when I was a kid. And so I would practice. I had to practice 30 minutes a day. And then um, so what I, I, I did take voice lessons quite a few times on and off throughout the past however many years. And um, I would I would go to a voice lesson and I would practice what the teacher is instructing me to do. And I would practice 20 to 30 minutes a day. And, you know, I think, too, if we are to become better singers, we need to sing and practice some things that are challenging. And one of the great things about worship songs is we, as songwriters, we write worship songs so anybody can sing them. We don't make them super challenging. And so what can happen to singers in, in kind of the worship world is we sing simple, beautiful corporate worship songs to Jesus And if we're wanting to grow as singers, we actually need to be singing like vocal (laughs) warm-ups, vocal exercises, like the not fun stuff. But like that is how we're going to get challenged. And so, yeah, for those of you that are listening, that are like, I want to be a better singer. Like, how do I do this? You need need to practice singing, whether you get, you know, you like find a YouTube channel and you work on specific things. Maybe you need to get some vo- some vocal lessons, some voice lessons, kind of learn how to sing. Maybe, you know, you love singing, but you're not right on the pitch. Like you've heard people say, like, maybe you're, you're flat or something like that. Like you need, you need to work on that. Um, and so you, here's the truth. You can get better. You're not in the box that you think you're in. The ceiling that you think you have isn't real. You actually can grow in your skill as a singer but it's going to take some time just like anything else. If you want to get good at, it's going to take some time. So um, yeah, get lessons, <laughs> practice, sing more than just one song, like actually sing some things that are challenging. And and don't stop with being rejected. Maybe somebody says you're not, you didn't sound good. All right, let's, let's learn how to sound good. Don't, don't take uh, everything for rejection. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. That's right. You- Go ahead. <clears throat> I was going to say, that's right. Even going back to Caleb's story, you know, he didn't just get rejected and be like, no, you can't be on the worship team. And him be like, oh, I guess, you know, I just can't even imagine. Like if he had as an, I think he was like 18, 19 when that happened, had he not continued Mm. to grow in his skill as, as a, as a singer, had he, had he given up? I just think about, man, the songs that he's written, yeah. His his worship leadership and yeah. just the way that he leads a room in worship with his voice, not just his instrument. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh, thank you, Jesus, for encouraging his heart mm-hmm. to, to, to press on and to grow. Um, because it, it's just such a gift to the body of Christ, who he is, his voice and his worship leadership. And so, yeah, I mean, not giving up is, is huge. Let's talk about songwriting. I, I know Rachel is a good a uh, songwriter, a great songwriter, because I have been in the room where Rachel has helped and has spearheaded and I don't know, orchestrated one of the great songs I have ever heard in my life. And that is, I don't know if you remember this, Rachel. Do you remember the song? In the Black Community It's one of the great worship songs ever written by any worship leader at any time in history. And it just came out of a spontaneous, we were hearing God, right? And it just came forth out of us like a chorus <laughs> rising uh, from the ground. So I know um, I've seen you do it. I've seen you write beautiful songs. And that one to me is still a song that will be uh, in my heart for the rest of my life. That was one of <laughs> the most fun 
nights of worship of all time that I've been a part of. Um, man, just so many fun memories, just <laughs> I like singing, leading worship, and then kind of just went into like kind of a prayer time and just these choruses. I, I know I remember this exactly, and it was such a blast. So before we get into song, we have to tell you what we're talking about. Uh, uh, Rachel and Caleb and, and Corey Asbury and and Bob Powers, who I just uh, just miss. I mean, there's few great people that have walked the face of the earth better than Bob. But anyway, um, they they came down to our town and they had oh they had been leading worship all weekend for our for our little church there and and we just got to the end and I can't remember. I think Corey had like lost his voice or something. I mean, he just couldn't sing anymore. And they they usually sing Holy Ghost Party, and it was he goes, I can't sing it, you sing it, and so I I get up there and I'm I'm trying to do my best like hold in the hold into them or whatever, and uh, and then it just stops like we get done, but you could tell like people still wanted to keep going and we were still just having such a blast, and uh, somebody just kind of played this lick and 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 Caleb. You can't let him. I mean, he just he just totally got into it. And then we just started singing. I my child Eden just came in the door, uh, but we just started singing in the black community in the black because I used to always joke with them and say that every time I went to IHOP, which was actually only like a Thursday night and I'd walk in the door, they'd start singing are doing a prayer set about the black community. And my joke was, why every time I come in there, you know, there's there's some kind of count, you know, you get one, two, okay, we got enough. Let's go to the black community. And so that was kind of the joke. And then we just started singing in the black community. And we sang it for another 15 minutes or so. And so anyway, powerful song, revelation, all of those things. On a serious note, how do we, or how do you write music? Oh gosh. Okay. I'm so, I'm still laughing. My cheeks are <laughs> it was hard. such a fun night. It was so fun. <laughs> it really was. I'm, I'm like still there. I'm, I'm back there right hey, now. And Rachel, it's reliving. not for nothing either. It's not for nothing. And I know you have been in thousands of sets, like where the joy of the Lord comes in the room. Like, and you might see that's really strange and, and not really spiritual. I, I'd probably walk out if I was there, but like the joy of the Lord was filling the room and it might seem arbitrary or, or it might seem a silly but people were getting set free because the joy of the Lord was in the room and, and everybody in a sense was in on the joke, if, if you will, and it was enjoying it. They, and uh, so anyway, it, it meant something. So when I do, yeah, when I think of it, I'm like you, it's, it's a very fond memory and it, it meant something. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, to, yeah. Super fun. <laughs> I can, I, I'm so glad you sang it. Cause I was like running through my head too. <laughs> in the black community. Okay, Josh told me he would give me ten dollars if I can get you to sing in the black community. So I just got that. So anyway, go ahead. Oh, nice. I get five, right? <laughs> okay, that's right. You get five. <laughs> um, man, I forget the question. I think How do you write me music? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so yes, songwriting. Um, man. Uh, okay, it's just there's that's like a huge topic, how to write songs, my own journey in songwriting. So I, um, I kind of like with my book, I didn't really set up. I didn't have this, like, I want to, when I grow up, I'm going to write songs. Um, honestly, my heart and my kind of my goal was I I want to, I want to lead worship. Like that was my, um, kind of what I wanted to, you know, do with my life. And as I was, getting to lead worship more and more. I, I just, the idea of songwriting was just kind of always, always there. And so, but I, I had some roadblocks with songwriting. I was massively <laughs> afraid that I didn't have anything to say. I didn't have anything to offer and, and, and or just wanted, I want to songwrite, but I don't know what to say. Or I, I was also like, is it, are my songs going to, um, going to pass like the doctrine test? Like, <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm there you go. Write. Yeah. You know, just kind of, I was always worried about that. But I would say um with with songwriting, I the 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 biggest here's my biggest tip. I don't even know if I'm giving tips right now, but this is this is my biggest tip with songwriting. If you say, I want to write songs, and maybe you've been saying it for a couple months, 
Maybe you've been saying that for a couple of years. Someday I want to write songs. You know, my biggest tip for you is to start writing songs. It is one of those things that is really fun to talk about and dream about. And I'm going to write songs. Um, but I, and I have wasted a lot of time saying, I'm going to write a song, you know, or, oh, like, I want to write a song about this or that. But the actual, the discipline of writing songs, I think we think of songwriting as like inspiration hits. And then we sit down and we just kind of like write a song super fast. And maybe that happens every once in a while, but like songwriting is a discipline. And so time blocking um, times throughout your week to, to write, to work on songwriting is, is massive. And so for me, I, I have a set time for me. It's, it's Thursdays, Thursday afternoons. I will sit down and I've got a two hour block of time and I just work on songwriting and sometimes great things come out. Sometimes nothing comes out, but the consistency of working the muscle and, and, and working on that is, um, is then you see, you see the fruit later What's on. that look like? Are you sitting with the piano? Are you sitting alone? Are you sitting with a pen and paper? Are you sitting with your phone and recording it? What's, what's that look like in that block of time when right. you're writing song? So I will share what it looks like for me, but I want to be clear that there is no yeah, yeah, yeah. formula. You everybody's, everybody's songwriting process is different. For you me, bet. though, on a, on a Thursday, um, I, ideally, I, I write with paper and pen and I that's kind of going out of style every time I'm in a co-writing session everybody you know they've got their phones out and they're like typing things and um I just I don't know I'm I'm a pen and paper person so I have my pen I got my paper out I've got um I sit in front of a keyboard I I play piano and so, so sometimes it's a I like to just have a I've got a melody in my head or like a lyric or a theme I want to write about but most of the time for me, and again, this is my process, I want to write songs that the church can sing. I want to write songs. I want to give language to the church, and I want it to be what God is saying to the church. I want it to be the church having language to respond what God is doing in their hearts and give them language in a corporate song to sing it to him. And so the, for me, like that's kind of, what I'm looking to do and, and my goal in, in those songwriting sessions. And so my, you know, my two hours don't begin, you know, when the clock st strikes one o'clock, it actually begins days earlier in my relationship with Jesus. What are you doing? What are you saying? Like, what's, what's on your heart? Like yeah. in my just time with the Lord, like that's kind of my part of my songwriting time. Yeah. Cause I'm constantly just wanting to sing his heart and, give the church language. And so I kind of go from there. And that's kind of my final point that I want to make in your book, listening to you talk, you cannot substitute that time alone with Jesus Christ, whether it's at your instrument, whether that's singing, whatever it is that singing to the Lord, that time that you're not on the stage. Um, one thing that I loved, 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 loved at your, with your time at IHOP and, and some others is I always felt like you had already been there. Like you, you weren't just leading a song, like in your time with Jesus, like you had already encountered him and then you were just getting on stage. Like you could tell that uh, you had spent time with God. <clears throat> and so can you just talk about that? And that'll be my last question, that importance of having that alone time with Jesus, whether it's in, with your microphone, whether it's with your instrument, and just spending time with him and letting him download uh, his his love to you before you get on stage. Yeah, it can be almost impossible to lead someone to a place that you've never been. Never yourself. been yourself. That's right. Blind leading the blind. And so, you know, as a worship leader, if I show up. And I'm like, okay, like I'm here to lead worship. Here we go. Come on, everyone follow me. I don't really know where we're going. And I don't <laughs> really know where the Lord wants us to go, but like, let's do it. I can sing. I'll just, we'll just, well, we'll just see what happens, you know? And, um, you know, the Lord probably still moves through that, but <laughs> the importance of my, my relationship with you, like it's, it's everything. Like I, I can't pretend to lead his people 
to places in his heart to encounter what I haven't been there myself. I haven't encountered him there myself. And so, and, and two, like if I'm not filling myself up with his word, if I'm not asking him to speak and, and, and to encounter him on my own, I, I have nothing to give. I have nothing to even like, hey, like I don't have any language to sing about hope. The church needs to hear the voice of the Lord. The church needs to sing about hope right now because we're all feeling a little hopeless. But here I am, I'm like, I haven't been doing that. I haven't been feasting on the Lord and his hope. And I haven't I haven't gone there in my own heart, in my own life. Like I can't, how can I lead people there, you know? And so, yeah, the importance of my own time with Jesus, my all, like, and, I, and I can't, it, the stage time doesn't count. The stage time is overflow. Mm. It's just, it's always overflow. Is there something there to overflow or is there not? And I, I think I, I've had wake up calls on stages when I've, you know, kind of just had a bad week or just kind of got distracted or I was busy and I didn't, I didn't spend time with Jesus or I've just, I've just even been disconnected. You know how you've had those seasons of just, just yeah. disconnected. And I would be on a stage leading worship and the Lord is good and kind and he, yeah. he leads his people and, and they worship. But it's that wake up call to myself. Like I'm not in a place of overflow right now. I'm in the place of being very, very empty. And it's the kindness of the Lord to kind of use this moment as his people lead worship, but I'm just kind of standing here. And I, I can, you know, I can feel that now when I've hit those moments and it, it quickly brings me back to his presence. Like I've mm. got to put myself before the Lord. I've got to have relationship. Um, and, and the byproduct of that is the overflow when, when you're, when you're singing and when you're leading, you have something to sing, you have a place to bring the people of God to in worship. Called to sing. It is the book it's out now. And I want Rachel to tell us how can we get it? How can we find her? She is a wealth of information. There's, um, sets and songs all over the internet that you can find her. She's a fantastic worship leader and uh, she's anointed and she's a kind, a kind, loving person as well. And this book is so anointed. It's so good. So uh, Rachel, where can people find you and how can they find the book? Yeah. Okay. So I, I've got a website. It's called to sing.com. And you can find me there. You can also, there's a link right on that website to my book, but you can find the book anywhere books are sold, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Target, um, all online. Um, so hit one of those up and uh, yeah, called to sing.com. Are you on social media? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> I am on social media, but I don't, I don't, I think I might be Rachel dot Culver on Instagram. <laughs> I think, but maybe don't look that up just in case it's not. <laughs> just I don't know. In case. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll make sure oh, we'll yeah. make sure we get the correct link and uh, we'll put it up there so people can find you on social media and, uh, and follow you and all those, all those things. Uh, it's also encouraging, you know, to see people and how they raise their kids and, and, and her, her life, the gospel is, uh, is seen through it. So it's, it's an honor to have you. And before you leave, before we leave, can you just pray for, or maybe bless uh, some singers that are, are listening today? Yes. <sighs> Jesus. I just thank you father for what you're doing on the earth. God, I thank you that you are raising up singers. I thank you that you have given us voices and father. I ask that you would raise up all across the globe, singers that are after your heart, singers that are encountering you in private so that they can declare the truth and the goodness of God in public. And so, Father, I ask that you would raise up yeah. singers in this generation. God, I pray that you would call them forth, that you would call them out, that you would set them on the wall, that you would set them in the house of God. Like Samuel, Father, I pray that you would call them out, Father. And I pray, I just, yeah, I just pray right now for for breakthrough, for hindrances and walls and ceilings and boxes that they put themselves in. Father, I pray that they would be broken in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would help singers to find their voice and to, to find relationship with Jesus and that they would go forth into, into this calling of singing in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. Called to Sing. There it is. Great book. You can find it on Amazon and uh, any, pretty much anywhere. She has a website. We'll make sure those things get to you. Thank you so much for being on our show. Powerful, powerful. Just felt the Lord all over this interview and this time together. Of course, you can uh, like, subscribe, and review Grace Talks. You can find us anywhere podcasts are available. Hey, make sure you tell somebody about this interview. Make sure they find this thing. This is great. Um, this is great. And we'll see you next week. This is Grace Talks. And uh, thank goodness for kids. They keep you humble, don't they? Have a great week. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you.